You are live at the Literary Lounge with your host, Destiny D, bringing you the newest and the brightest of the literary world right to your ear hole. Every Saturday from 1 to 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Tune in. Listen up. And learn something. This is the spot for new hot authors who are given the opportunity to shine each Saturday from one to two PM. Eastern Standard Time, we will showcase a new author here at the Literary Lounge. We are taking out the time to give all of our literary friends an opportunity to showcase their work. The new author spotlight is a platform that allows us to ask up to 10 questions or more to give you, the audience, the most in-depth current information about each writer in their literary piece. We will have a new guest every week. Stay tuned. Hey, 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 it's your girl, Destiny D, and you are live on WTLR Radio, and we are back. Oh, my God, it feels so much better to be back live at the Literary Lounge. Um, As many of you, like, very hectic with the weather and stuff. We had Hurricane Florence, and then we got piggybacked by Hurricane Michael. So this is like the first show that we've had in the last two weeks, and we'd like to thank everybody for joining us today, which is October 20th, 2018, and we have a young lady that's with us today as our special guest. Her name is Deanna Johnson, and she is the author of the new book called Seven Shots. Okay, so what we want to do is we want to give her a full-hour interview about herself, a little bit about her book. Uh, a couple of places where you can find her if she has anything going on as far as event-wise, um, you know, some contact info just in case if you want to show your love and support and also, um, you know, just a reflection of her work. So we're going to see if she's on the line. So give us just a moment. Hi, Brianna. Are you there? Yes, ma'am. Hello. Hi, sweetheart. How are you today? I'm doing great. I'm glad to be on here. Thank you for having me. Oh, no problem. No problem at all. So I would like to welcome you first and foremost to the Literary Lounge. And this is a live interview where we talk a little bit about you and your book. We give everybody, you know, the listening audience, you know, some information about um, your actual work. So can you tell the listeners today is Deanna Johnson? Where are you from? Give us a little bit of background information. Okay, well, I'm actually from a small town in Virginia called Galax, and I moved to South Carolina when I was about seven, and so I've been here about 21 years, and now I'm in a little tiny town called Fountain Inn at the bottom of Greenville, and so it's a humble little town. I love it. They've been very supportive of me, and I currently have three children. And they range, I have a son that's nine and a daughter that's eight and another daughter who's two. So I stay pretty busy. <laughs> um, but they're, they're my inspiration. So, I, I, you know, with them being as little as they are, I want them to see that if they, you know, if they want something to go for it. And that's what I'm doing. I'm going for it. <laughs> well, that's great. And, and, I, and I hear that, that two-year-old, ooh, girl. So how does it work with you having uh, three children, and I'm sure you work and you write. How do you juggle all of that? 
Well, it, it's a lot. So anybody who writes, is they have to have a schedule. They've got the schedule themselves or they'll never get anything done. And I've learned my schedule is the same as it was when I was reading a lot, is when my kids go to bed every night, usually by 8 o'clock they're asleep. And that's my time. That's my me time. So I spend anywhere from four hours a night to writing or reading or researching and and that's my time. It's it's how I get things done. If I didn't stick to that schedule, though, I wouldn't be able to do it. Well, you definitely need to pass that schedule along to me because all of the children here, 8 o'clock, they looking at me like it's 2 o'clock in the afternoon and they still got 9 <laughs> or 10 more. <laughs> so I understand. Have, I like, understand. Like, I have a 13-year-old. and. Ah. Oh, my God. I, he could be up at 3 in the morning ping-pinging on a video game, and I'm like, you know you have to go to school in the morning, you know. And he <laughs> manages. I don't know how he does it. Like, he goes to bed at 3. He gets up by 7. He gets on the bus. He's fully functional at school. He has straight A's. I'm like, I don't see how you do it, but okay. You're not yeah. having any problems. But yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, well, and see, I guess mine is kind of like I have to have that schedule because if I don't, then I wouldn't get it done. So my kids know that they know by like seven thirty that the mom eyes come out and they got to go. <laughs> <laughs> I know that's right. That is so awesome. <laughs> Expectations on the on, on the family. Um, I think that's an awesome thing. And I actually, I applaud you. You know, for you to be. You know, a mother of three, it definitely takes um, dedication to put in that time to, to do this book. So let me let me ask you a few questions about this book. Um, how did all of this come about? Like, when did you actually start writing? So I've been writing for a little over a year now, but this book took me probably about five or six months to write. Um, I, the idea actually came because um, me and my family, we, we, we hunt. We hunt for our food, so we kind of live off of the land. And I was sitting down one day, and I got to thinking, I said, you know what? What would it be like to be the animal? You know, so then that's where my ideas came. That's where everything started kind of fitting into play. And I said, let me give, some, let me give my audience a thrill ride that they won't forget, that they'll understand, and they'll want more of it. And I hope that's what I've done. Yeah, it sounds very interesting to take on the actual perception of the animal. Um, you know, you you hardly hear of anybody doing that. So that was good, thinking outside the box as far as, you know, that mindset of, um, the storyline because like the only one that we've actually seen or is I'm thinking, you know, movie wise is the cartoon Bambi. That's the only time that you yeah. really get the perception of the animal. Um yeah. but I think that that's really cool because most of the time you, you think about the hunter and not the hunted. Yeah. And and, and yep. in some cases you actually have the humans who are actually being hunted. So you have a lot of that's that's different yeah, and that's what my book was directed towards is I wanted the humans to – I want everybody to feel what it's like to be an animal. So the humans are being hunted. So they get this thrill ride mm-hmm. of what if it was you? What if it was you who was being hunted like an animal? Yeah, yeah. And and you know what? I, I cringe when I think about, you know, the hills have eyes and saw mm-hmm. and all – of the horror <laughs> movies, so, like the ho- ho- what's the other movie? Hostel, um, a yeah. hostel, a ho- yeah. those hostel, people were hunted. Think, yeah. And, yeah, yeah, those people were hunted. So that, that, that I don't want to be hunted. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it's so, a perfect book for around Halloween. I can tell you that. <laughs> definitely, definitely, it would definitely fit in. Um, so is it gorish? Like, what is the um? What is the term for this book? Is it is it really gory or is it just suspenseful or what kind of genre it's did just, you drop it in? I dropped it in thriller because it's not it does have some gore in it. Um 
not bad, but it's it's got it's more to keep you on the edge of your seat. So you take a trip with a girl named Blair Sadler, and you go through. She she explains her experience to you, and mm-hmm. you you feel like you are her. So it yeah. literally gives you a chance to see what she went through, and it keeps your heart beating, and you on the edge of your seat and wanting more and. So far, everybody who I've spoken to who has reviewed it have told me that they have not been able to put it down. They have to finish it that day. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay, so let me ask you this. Like, how long is the book? Is it is it a couple of hundred pages or how many pages? It's about 200. About it's a, I think 175 pages is where I, I – it's not too long, so it's a great, you know, little read. It's not one of the thicker books, and – I wanted it that way because I just I wanted to get the story across without adding so much detail that it bores you. So I believe right. that's what I accomplished with this one. Oh, that's good. That's good because I normally tell people when they're publishing, um, it's best to stay around two hundred ish because you know you have enough time to sit down and actually read it. But I read actually pretty fast, so it doesn't take me as long to go through you know books. But like I actually. Uh, did a book for a guy, and it was well over 400 pages, maybe close to 500. And I read it three mm-hmm. times sitting, but I was exhausted. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's mentally draining, yeah. But it's it's great for your mind, though, because I, I always tell everybody that my goal as an author is I want my books to take somebody somewhere, take you away from reality, even if only for a second. So, that's why I always enjoyed reading is because you get that moment where you can escape whatever is going on in your life and travel mm-hmm. to anywhere in a book. All right. All right. That is so awesome. So what we're going to do, like, for just a moment, we're going to take a short break, and then we're going to come back, and we're going to dig deeper into this book, okay? Okay. So hold on the line for me. All right. Okay. This is the spot for new hot authors who are given the opportunity to shine. Each Saturday from 1 to 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, we will showcase a new author here at the Literary Lounge. We are taking out the time to give all of our literary friends an opportunity to showcase their work. The New Author Spotlight is a platform that allows us to ask up to 10 questions or more to give you, the audience, the most in-depth current information about each writer in their literary piece. We will have a new guest every week. Stay tuned. All right, and we are back, and we are live at the Literary Lounge on WTLR Radio, and today's date is October 20th, 2018, and we have a young lady by the name of Brianna Johnson, who is our special guest for episode 22, and her new book, Seven Shots. We're actually digging deeper into that book, so we're going to see if she's on the line for a second. Bree, you still there? Yes, ma'am. All right, all right. So with this book, Seven Shots, um, can you tell us a little bit of background? Like how how did all of this uh, come about? How did, how did the concept for all of this come about? Well, I have to say that it's it's one of those things where this one, it, it stumped me a little bit as I was writing it because I I wanted to – the way I normally write is I have a beginning and I have an end and the middle is kind of like you figure it out. But with this one, I had the middle, but no beginning or end. So it was a little bit different for me to write this one. And it was fun because I got to build that background with Blair and she has a background. She comes in and, and when she gets taken, when she gets kidnapped, um, her life is turned upside down and everything that she once knew or was afraid of, now she looks at it and she's 
she's like, well, I should have never been afraid of those things. This is something I should have feared most of my life. And, and you go through that experience with her and that experience that she goes through will have you either crying or angry. Like there's so many emotions that you'll go through with this book. Okay. I hate to be like a spoiler (laughs) when it comes to the book, but is, is there any tragedy to this book? Like, does she actually make it or is she haunted or do you have to leave that up to the reader to find I got to leave that up to them. That's the one thing I have to leave up to them, but you will know that um, she's a strong woman and strong women will fail. They will succeed. They will have moments where, you know, and, and there's strong women all around you. Women are very strong people and you, once you look around and you see that she's not, she's just like all these other strong women that you know. And mm. what she goes through is, is literally, <laughs> it's triumphing. So yeah, you you got to read it to find out, but it's, it's a thrill ride. <laughs> yeah. Cause I was just thinking about it. Like when I was listening to you talk and I was like, well, what if she's like a fighter? Like what if, the guy just picked the wrong chick to mess with, and she ends up, <laughs> <laughs> she ends up, you know, under the situation, and she actually, he ends up being the one that's hunted, and, you know, because it could definitely go that way, pick the wrong female, um, because yeah. we have a, we do have a survival instinct that pretty much kicks in when we think life or death, and we have to make it, make that decision, is it you or me, and most times, we're going to pick me. Um, yeah, so yeah, yeah that's I, a part I, of being a strong woman, yeah, yeah, so, um, you said, how long did you say that it took you to write the book from start to finish? about five months, maybe a little bit more than that, um, I sat down and and because it's so short, it was one of those that I enjoyed writing this one more than I've enjoyed writing anything it, It's weird because. It's such a thriller, but I enjoyed it. I think because it's in first person, and this was my first time writing in first person. Um, okay. And you, when you write in first person, you get a better experience as a writer and a reader. So I think that's why I enjoyed it so much. So what, did you find it difficult with this being your first um, position book? Yeah, I it was um it's a it's a change that you have to get used to, but I think once I got into the book really good, I kind of got into the swing of things, I guess. So mm-hmm. that that challenge is always there at first. So I had to get over that little hump. Right. Now, did you have any writer's block? Was there any difficulty, you know, within the piece that you wrote? Um, I did get writer's block a few times, um, but I I had a beta reader, so I had, and her name is Jennifer, shout out, (laughs) Um, and she helped me a lot whenever I would have a a moment that I couldn't figure something out or I was stuck, she would be, you know, she was reading it and she she would, I'd talk to her and just kind of bounce ideas and brainstorm and, and finally it would just help me to get out of it. And sometimes with writer's block, you have to literally just set it down and walk away Mm -hmm. for just a little Mm -hmm. while, because if you don't, it'll drive you insane. (laughs) Yeah. I know exactly what you mean. Like you, you literally have to walk away, sit down, give it a day or two, then come back with fresh eyes and then something will pop up and then you'll be like, okay, I got it. And then you run with it. Um, yeah, I, I, exactly what you mean because it's 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 very hard to be you know the writer the reader the 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 uh what you call it the um I'm trying to think of the term for it it's like how do I run out of words okay <laughs> it's like when you're you're the actual person that's critiquing it as you're going along that's yeah. what I meant you know yeah. it's it's very when you're writing it, you're reading it, you're critiquing it, and then, you know, you're trying to do all of those things to make sure that it's a good book. Yeah, so... Exactly, and yeah, and that's why I was so thankful for my beta reader, because she gave me that outside view that I didn't have Mm -hmm. within myself, because, you know, as you're you're a writer, so when you're writing it, you're like, Mm -hmm. 
okay, this is great. I love it, but will they love it? <laughs> so okay, having right. her was is amazing. Yeah, that that helps out a whole lot. I have noticed that um when it comes to writing, it's like whatever you think is best, it it it's gonna cross over to the reader. It, it it's like always write true to yourself. You know, always write what your brain comes up with. You know, because like not everybody is gonna like your writing, but not everybody is gonna hate your writing. So it's like as long yeah. as you're true to the ideas that you come up with then, you know, you'll have followers, you'll have people who say, well, if the book had it did this, you take those things that they say and you and you kind of cooperate them into, like, your new writing. So they can appeal to the ones who um, thought that the book was a little bit, you know, different than what they were going to go mm-hmm. with. Because I have heard say, oh, well, instead of killing her off, you should have had her survive. And then you should have had her hunting, you know what I'm saying? And then that could have been part two, you know what I'm saying? So it's yeah. like you can always take criticism as constructive and yeah, kind of like a, apply those things that people wish they had saw into like a second part, Yeah, you know? And a lot of times yeah. like a people, a people, people mess up. I, I, well, no, I take that back. People have a tendency of killing off the main character at times. And then they're mm-hmm. like, okay, well, I'm gonna make the book a standalone because you know the main character is gone. But in actuality, there's so many different ways that you can come back with another part. Yeah, um, a lot of times, you know, you can always plug in a silent character. And what I mean by that is, like, let's say for instance, your main character had a baby sister, and and you really didn't go into any detail with the sister, but they know that the character has a sister. You could come back in the yep. second part and, like, my sister is revenging my death or something like that. You could always yep. plug in silent characters and bring them in, you know, in part two, part three, well, however you wanted to. If you wanted to turn it into a series, there's always a way to plug and play the people it. into yep. the book. Mm-hmm. And, yeah, yep. and like That's I said. That's actually maybe- where I got the idea from um, I had wrote uh, two other books. And so that's actually where my second book came from, is from my fans. They were like, hey, I really like this character. She needs to be in there more. <laughs> so I, you, you take yeah. that criticism and you turn it any way you can. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, so with this book, um, where is it being sold and, and how much is it being sold for? Well, I have them on Amazon. I also have them on Kindle. I have them on BarnesandNoble.com. And then I keep copies on hand. So for all of my locals, um, I stay at events. I'm usually around and about. I'm in the public eye a lot. So I'm actually at an event right now. (laughs) So um, I, there is. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, I, I'm at an event right now, so I snuck away. <laughs> but um, oh, well, you, there is sell for. You need to plug where you are. You you um you need to let everybody know what event that you're attending, so they can show love. Yeah. And so, where, where are you? Okay. Yes, I'm in Simpsonville, South Carolina, and I'm at the um, Neely Ferry Farm Vendor Craft Fair. And it's right in Simpsonville. You can't miss it. It's um, at a subdivision. There's 151 vendors here. And um, oh, wow. I'm here with a local artist. And there, there's a bunch of people. It is sprinkling, so we do have some rain, but the people still came out. So it's it's packed right now. And we have fun stuff for kids to do. There's space painting, a bounce house. There's tons of food and homemade crafters, mm. it's it's a great event. And it's all free. You come in and the kids get to bounce for free, and face painting, I think, is like $4. Okay. Do you have any books on hand? I do. I do. I actually have um, plenty of my Seven Shots book, and then I have a few of my uh, the, my first two books. So I do have plenty of them on hand. Awesome, awesome. So we're going to we're gonna actually, you know, plug that a little bit on in the show. Um, so that okay. people can know exactly who you are. So what, what time um, is the event being held? Like, is there a cutoff time? Yeah, it's from 10 o'clock until 4 o'clock or 5 o'clock today. Also, they're doing a raffle. So that it's four calls. There's a little boy, and he's sick. And so they're taking all the money that's raised and giving it to him mm-hmm. and his family. 
And there, we all, as each vendor, they all donated one item to go into a raffle mm-hmm. bag, and they're raffling them off. I think it's a dollar a ticket. And if you win, you win the basket. And there's a ton of baskets because there's 150 vendors here, so <laughs> you can't you can't okay. go wrong by buying a ticket. Oh, okay. Well, that's awesome, and I and I think that's a a great thing that they're doing for that family and that child. Mm-hmm. Um, great. So, um, let's see. Now, as far as the main character of your book. Do you feel more connected to her, or is there another person in the book that you would associate yourself as being more similar as? Um, I, I'd say I have to feel more connected to her because uh, I, I guess it's the way that I would like to portray myself um, as a strong, independent woman who knows what she wants and she goes after it and who's not afraid to stand up for herself. And so... And and there's a lot of women, and I think that's why I wrote this, is because there's a lot of women out there who want to be just like her and who are like her, so it, it, they can relate to her. Yeah, that's true. Um, it, it, it's very rare that you find the meek and, and, and mild, the ones who really don't fight back and don't have something to say about a certain situation. <laughs> Yeah, because we're feisty. <laughs> I've had people take, say that to me a lot. They said, you sure do talk a lot. And I was like, yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> That's when you say, well, I do host a talk show. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, I do that. I do that. But it's not about me, you know, per se. It's it's about the, the writer. And, and that's what the Literary Lounge is actually all about. It's about giving, you know, authors the opportunity to shine, to, like, showcase their work, to be able to say something about their book, to give them the opportunity that most uh, artists are lack. Um, you know, a lot of times when you have a publisher, you know, you get the book published, they put it into the stores or they put it online, and then you hardly hear from them. But luckily, with Transparency Library, the company that I created, um, you're able to get your publishing, you're able to get your your first interview, you're able to get your first book review, you're able to get um, magazine spotlights and stuff like that. You get a plethora of opportunities that the average writer would not get directly from their, um, you know, their publishing house. So this was Mm -hmm. was just a platform to, you know, build the writer, to build their brand, to build their book, and to get, you know, the word out. You know, I have this book. It's just releasing. You can meet me here to to purchase. Um, You know, this is my thoughts about the book, and hope you enjoy it and things of that nature. So it's it's, it's, it's really for the writer. Um, And like I say, yeah, this show is not about me. It's not about us. It's about you. It's about your work and your book, and and we just try to give you the opportunity to you know display it to the world. Normally, what we try to do is um, if there's callers in the calling banks and stuff like that, we give them the opportunity to ask questions um, with a live Q and A. So if you know anybody that's willing to come live on the air, be sure to plug them. Let them know because we're going to take a short break in just a moment. And you'll be able to, like, text them or instant message them and be like, okay, it's a live Q&A part, call in. And, and okay. we'll be able to like, allow them to ask any kind of questions that they may have. It might be something that I missed. Um, but we're, we're going to go ahead and do that. Um, and if there's anybody that pops up, we'll let them know, you know, that you, all they have to do is press the number one key and that'll let me know that they have a question. Um, just to let you know, you did have some people that was listening in. Um, so we'd like to thank everybody who's tuning in via the Internet, by phone. Uh, we appreciate all of you uh, listening in. If you're scared to be live, it's okay. If you want to um, instant message her or anything like that, if you are a friend on Facebook, Feel free to ask those questions, and we will um, read them live on the air um, without you having to be on on the actual line. So if you guys 
have Brianna saved on Facebook as a friend. You can start instant messaging her questions, and I'm sure she can read them out to us, and then we'll respond to those questions. So we're going to take this short break, and we're going to be right back. Okay, Bri? Okay, sounds good. All right. This is the spot for new hot authors who are given the opportunity to shine. Each Saturday from 1 to 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, we will showcase a new author here at the Literary Lounge. We are taking out the time to give all of our literary friends an opportunity to showcase their work. The new author spotlight is a platform that allows us to ask up to 10 questions or more to give you, the audience, the most in-depth current information about each writer in their literary piece. We will have a new guest every week. Stay tuned. You are live at the Literary Lounge with your host, Destiny D, bringing you the newest and the brightest of the literary world right to your ear hole. Every Saturday from 1 to 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Tune in. Listen up. And learn something. All right, guys, and we are back, and this is your girl Destiny D, and we are live on WTLR Radio, and you are listening to the Literary Lounge. Today's date is October twentieth, twenty eighteen. And we are celebrating episode 22 with our special guest by the name of Brianna Johnson. And we have been talking about her new book titled Seven Shots. And it's a very, uh, excuse me, suspenseful thriller um, that takes on the perception of a young lady who is being hunted um, as if she was an animal. So I think that that was really intriguing and um it makes me want to uh get a copy of the book and actually see how everything turns out because um Miss Bree has been tight lipped <laughs> about the actual um storyline as far as, you know, what happens to a young lady that's being hunted and whether or not if she's a fighter or whether or not if she is a lamb led to the slaughter. So in order to find out about this good new book, you're going to have to order a copy and you're going to have to um, actually read it to find out what happens to the young lady. You guys, for some odd reason, my fingers are slipping. <laughs> I did not intend to do that. Let's see if Miss Bree is on the air. Bree, are yes, you there? Yes, ma'am. Yep. All I'm right. Here. So in in the last few seconds, um, what we did was we tried to ping out to everybody to let them know that the live Q and A is in full effect. So if anybody pops in on the line, um, we'll let them know, you know, to press the number one key, um, to let us know that they have a question. So whenever a question arises, I'll be sure to put them live on the air. So I'll keep my eyes on, um, the dial up. So with that being said, um, can you give us a little bit of information about um, how people can contact you? What's your social media? Um, Do you have Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, all that good stuff? So we need to know where we can find you. Yeah, I actually have um, Facebook. It's author Brianna Johnson. And um, 
<clears throat> I have a Twitter account, and it's also author Brianna Johnson. And then I have an Instagram, and it's under Brianna Johnson um, 4921. And you can find me on any of those, and then you can also message me. And then I also have my email, um, which a lot of people use to get in touch with me. And it's author Brianna 2323 at yahoo.com. Did we lose you? Uh oh. Did I lose you? Oh, okay. It it broke up. I heard um I heard part of your your email. Um so you might want to repeat that. Oh, okay. So I'm on um Facebook and Twitter at author Brianna Johnson and then I'm on the Instagram and it's Brianna Johnson forty nine twenty one. And then um, on my email is authorbrianna2323 at yahoo.com. Okay, okay, okay. So we got you now. So um, with that being said, um, do you have any events coming up in the near future that we should know about? I mean, I know you're currently at one, so if you want to plug that one again, you can. But if you have any in the near future, you can drop it too. (laughs) Yeah, so I have... um, Today I'm actually out in Simpsonville, and it's a little town right above Fountain Inn in South Carolina, and they're having 150 vendor crafters here, and it's called the Neely Farm Vendor Craft Fair, and all the donations and proceeds go to a family in need, so there's a little boy who is sick, and each vendor has dedicated an item to go into the raffle, and the tickets are a dollar. And you buy your tickets, and you can win a goodie bag with a bunch of different stuff in it, and all that money goes to that that sweet family. And so I'm out here. There's plenty of stuff to do for kids. It is a little rainy, but it's it's, it's still nice, and it goes on from 10 o'clock today until 5 o'clock this evening. And then my next okay. event is going to be again in Simpsonville, and it'll be on the 24th of November. And it's called Shopping on the Tracks, and they shut down Main Street, and we, um, all of us vendors get out there, and I'll be there with books on hand. I have books today, and they have all kinds of rides and stuff for kids to do. I think, don't don't mark me on this, but I believe they're going to have a car show. I could be wrong. Um, mm-hmm. But there there's tons of stuff for kids to do. They have food, and then you have your makers who will bring their stuff out here, and they create stuff. So that mm-hmm. those are my two newest events. Okay, okay. So any book signings or anything in the future? Um, I plan to try to get one at the end of October, but I haven't had it set in stone yet. We, the the fall is always a busy time around here with the events. So usually my book signings they go on hold until until right at Christmas time. So right now it's more of events, and I I sign the books here. It's kind of like a book signing. And you can come grab you a, a copy. Yeah, I have plenty of them on hand. And and how much are the books going for? They're fifteen dollars for the paperback. Okay, okay, all right. And and by the way, um, I, I didn't really go into any detail with your publishing. So who published your book for you? Elite Professional Publishing did it, and um, my publisher's name is Sharana. She's also an author, and she has been amazing through this experience with me. Um, she's guided me, helped me, been my friend. She, and, you know, she lives in Georgia, or now she lives in the eastern part of South Carolina. And she has drove all the way up here to see me when I do my book signings or when I release a book. And she's been so helpful in guiding me in the direction that I have been going in. So I have her to thank for that. That's so cool, and I'm glad that um you were able to have a, a awesome publisher because they're so hard to find. <laughs> yeah, they I've heard great. some nightmare stories. <laughs> so yeah, no, yes. she's been she's one of a kind. Yeah, I've I've had my share of uh, people who have came to me um, after the the horrific situation, and you know having to help them and. You know, I had one that that had found out that their their book had never even been copyrighted. Um, 
I had, I mean, it's just been so many, you know, nightmare stories that I've, I've heard from other people that, that I've scary. helped. Yeah, yeah, you'd be surprised what people will do, uh, you know, just to get a couple of dollars. So um, when you find one, it's good to stick with them. Um, yeah. And, and, you know, that you have somebody good that you're dealing with. So let me ask you this. Um, is there any books lined up for after uh, Seven Shots? Do you have anything in the works that you work? Of course. <laughs> I'm always writing. I stay busy, whether it's with poetry or writing a book. So I just signed up for the um, NaNoWriMo, the N-A-N-O. The Na- it's the, I'm sorry, it's the National Novel Writing Month for November. So I finally came up with a book idea for that one. And I'm going to attempt to see if I can win the award. <laughs> So we're going to see if I can do 50,000 words in 30 days. Oh, wow. Okay. I mean, that shouldn't be hard to do. I yeah, mean, I think, yeah. I think you can come up with, with that much um, in 30 days' time. I mean, you're, you're dedicating your evenings. So I would I would think that at least 5,000 a night would, would, would do it. I mean, without yeah. pushing yourself to any extreme, I, I think that you'd be able to do that. That should be no yeah, problem. Yeah. Just, I'm hoping so. It's it's one of it's a goal that I, I want to reach. So that's my next my next challenge in the works. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So just think you know, you have to sit down, you have to make a game plan, you have to say, Okay, you know, in order for me to make it within four hours every evening for the next thirty days I have to push out X Y Z amount of words. And then like yep. sometimes like it's feel like, okay, I'm running pretty good, Um, you know, I could keep on going, let me keep on going, even though I've met my mark, you'll get done quicker, yeah. it won't be like you're struggling and straining to do it, so just be positive mindset yeah. it, and have yeah. a goal, and if you can exceed yeah, that goal, Yeah, this is my first it. time doing it, yeah, this yeah. is my first time I, I, doing it, so I'm excited. Yeah, I did one, uh, I want to say last month, we had a young guy who put together a challenge to do uh, as many words as possible, and um, I pushed out uh, 9,000 words in, in less than hours. So, um, That's you know, amazing. I'm still look- yeah, I'm looking for somebody to beat that record. <laughs> oh, are you challenging me? <laughs> That's an official challenge. I'm looking for you to do more than 9,000 words in two hours. Okay, I'll, I'll take you up on that challenge, yeah. <laughs> all right, all right. I'm going to hold you to that, and I'm going to check in periodically just to see how you're coming along with that, all right? <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, oh, it's, it's, you know, challenges and things, goals and things to set for yourself and, um, it's always good to participate in some of those activities because, believe it or not, um, I've seen some people who haven't even produced a book win award, and I thought that that was, like, so weird. Like, how do you give an award for something you haven't even published yet? Um, yeah. But luckily what they did was they, um, they submitted, like, excerpts of the book to different um, challenges. Uh, what they did was, like, they, they, they uh, took some of their work, from inside the book that hadn't been published yet, and they just kept giving it to different challenges, different organizations, different um, um, things that they had uh, going on where you submit your writing um, to these different um, things. And I have a, a, a awesome friend who ha- hasn't even published his book yet, but he's submitted so many excerpts of what he's about to publish that he's won over 11 awards and he hasn't even published the book yet. Wow. So I, 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 and I have never seen that before. Before him, I had never seen that before. I said, how are you getting an award for a book you haven't even published yet? And then that's when he told uh-huh. me, he's like, all of the different challenges and things that he submitted his work to, you know, he's won yeah. awards from just submitting to these different events. And wow. he place every every literally every sticker he could put on his book um prior to the actual publication. So I think that that's awesome that you're doing that challenge and I hope and pray that you do really well with it. Um yeah. And if you win the award then you can 
stick that on his butt. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, yes. Like that. Like I um I literally almost fell for my computer when I saw the Amazon bestseller um placard that came up and I was like, Awesome. I get to put the little sticker on the book. <laughs> you know, so <laughs> monumental you know you may it may not be anything to anybody else but when it's your baby and it's in your hand and and you see the label of approval it means the world that's right that's right that's a lot of work that you know there's everybody that i speak to that comes by and they're like man you have to have a good imagination i'm like yeah you gotta have a lot of patience because writing a book is not an overnight process the process is a lot more than just writing and right, right. It's it's it. you gotta love it. If you don't love it, then you're not gonna do it. No, no, no. And that's true. And that's so true. And a lot of people, a lot of people think that oh, you're just doing it for the money, um, and this and the notoriety. No, no, no. We do it to get our thoughts out on paper first, and then it's like yes. okay, I hope you like it because this is me, you know. And, and yeah. you know, a lot of times we, we are fearful of what others might think, but then we're like, well, it's good to me, so it may be good to somebody else, so you want to share it. That's what yeah. writing is all about, is the ability to take what you think and put yeah. it down and allow others to, to, to read it, enjoy it, and possibly, you know, enjoy it enough to buy it and then, yeah. you know, to support you at whatever venture that you have going on. And and a lot of people are different. A lot of people get their uh, inspirations from different places. Like for you, for instance, you mentioned that um, it was just your perspective on, you know, people being hunted as opposed to uh, animals being hunted. Um, the person taking on the uh, perception of, of the hunted. So, you know, it takes a lot for you to think of those things and to actually rationalize the book first and foremost. And then it takes a whole nother mindset to actually put it in, you know, a figurative means for other people to enjoy. Um, My situation was a little bit different. When I wrote my first book, it wasn't based on um, any outside influence as far as my thoughts on different things. It was actually a dream. So, you know, everybody has their own, um, reasons and wills for writing um mine like i said was a dream so it was like i wrote it down so that i wouldn't forget everything because you know when you get my age and a bit older you know when you wake up with <laughs> a dream if, if, i'm serious when you when you wake up from a dream <laughs> and you go to tell somebody what happened in the dream you're gonna it's gonna be fragmented you're gonna miss something and it's not gonna go over as well as if they was like sitting beside you in a dream so yeah, I laugh because I keep a notepad on my nightstand for that exact reason. <laughs> yeah, and be surprised, and and like it's when I mean, it's fresh in your brain, you're able to write it all down. But I guarantee you, if you were to like get up from your bed to go into another room to tell somebody, you'd miss something, you'd forget something, and and it wouldn't yeah. it wouldn't come out the same way. So yeah, definitely keep that notebook um close by because I find myself. Um, scratching stuff down. Um, I find myself reading as I'm writing. I find myself being inspired as I'm typing. Like it could be like yeah. a situation that I wasn't even thinking about, and and like in the back of my mind, I'm thinking, well, wait, maybe they should take a flight. <laughs> so yeah. Then yeah. I, my, and see, and, that's the that's the great thing about it, though. I actually done that the other day. I was writing. And I was like, maybe this should happen. And then I said, you know what? That would make another good book. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And see, those things, and, like, if you can't really write it down, like, right offhand, scratch it down. Like, I have a book that's waiting in the wings right now, and I have not written one word to the book. But the concept is there. So it's like I just opened yeah. up a brand-new file, and I said, tell the story about the preacher, about, you know, the preacher that was at this church that did this. That's all I yeah. wrote in the whole thing. But I know that when I yeah. get ready to go back, I know exactly what I'm going to be writing about. So, yeah, it's always good to have physical notes as well as mental notes to put you right on track when it comes to what you're yeah. trying to write down. So, yeah, definitely that yep. is awesome to do. So definitely keep plenty of paper by the bedside, a good, a good ink pen or a pencil, 
you know, so you can actually put those those things down so that you'll be good to go. Now, um, just yeah. to ask you, you know, a couple more questions about the book. When was Seven Shots released? Um, when, when when did it debut? It would come out in August, at the very beginning of August. Um, it was, it was, oh, no, I'm sorry, not August, in July. <laughs> I'm thinking of my last year. So, yeah, it came out at the beginning of July, and I have, I've done very well. I'm very impressed. I, you know, like I said, my small town has supported me, even the surrounding towns in the area. They have supported me so well. And I've traveled to Virginia a few times. And my next bucket list is I want to go to Georgia and see what Georgia has to offer. Mm-hmm. I want to go down there and share my books to them. But, yeah, it's it's been a great ride so far. Well, that's awesome. And, and what I was going to tell you is that um, we actually have an Authors Guild. I don't know if I've added you to that yet, but I will do that as soon as the interview is over. And what we try to do is we try to share information amongst each other. It's, it's about 80 writers that's in our Writers Guild. And um, oh, yeah, yeah. they're all, yeah, they're all, when I say all over the world, all over the world. And I'm sure that there are some Georgia natives who may know of events and stuff that are taking place, like, in their city. So if you're interested in going to Georgia for any of the events, more than likely we can, like, powwow with some of the people that are in the writer's field and see if they have anything coming up in the near future that you can attend. That would be amazing, uh, yeah. So we have a lot. I, I'm the plug. <laughs> that so is awesome. Lot. Well, it's good to know you. <laughs> yes, yeah, so I have a lot of people that's in the writer's field. I have a lot of people in South Carolina. Um, we have people in Colorado, Georgia, Florida, Texas. Arizona, um, I mean, like I said, we're all over the place, but we're able to That's connect amazing. on Facebook. So, um, yeah, I want to, I want to uh, let you touch base with a couple of the Georgia natives and see if we ha- we can have anything set up or see if there's any events in the in that vicinity um, that you can attend. So that'll be an awesome venture for you as well. Um, I'm trying to yeah. think: is there anything I can uh, give you as far as support? Um, because I like to keep tabs on the babies that I have on the show just to see how they're going along, um, if they have any new releases that they have coming out, any events or anything that they're, you know, having. Uh, I like to p- help promote um, in any way. So if if you have anybody that's supporting you, if Elite Professional Publishing has a ad or if they have um, a commercial that they'd like to place, the, um feel free to pass that information along because we try to uplift each other um, because there's yeah. a lack of that. There's a severe yeah. lack of um, – so that's that's basically what we're here for. We're here to aid and support and to help in any way that we possibly can. Um, like I said, we have commercial time. We have ad space in the magazine. Um, I like to promote also on all three of my social media platforms. So you'll definitely see, see stuff on my timeline. So um, you can tell your friends to feel free to add me, um, and they'll see plenty of our work. Also, um, this live interview will be available for playback. So if you have any of your friends and loved ones who missed the actual interview, that's okay, because I'm going to give you a link to playback the actual um audio, and also um, it will be added to our YouTube channel. So you'll have both of those um, apparatuses to use to actually hear your interview. So I'm going to give you that information after the show so they can either hear it live or hear it, excuse me, hear it over the air directly from our show platform or either they can actually go on YouTube and listen to the interview. So they have multiple platforms that they can use to hear the actual interview. So with us being in the closing part of the interview, we have about five minutes left on the clock. Um, I'd like to thank you personally, first and foremost, for being our special guest for the day. Um, I know that it's not easy to to pull yourself away from the event that you're attending for a whole hour, so I really appreciate you taking out the time out of your busy schedule to be with us today. And like I say on every show, uh, without you, there is no show. So I wanted to thank you personally 
um, for being our special guest. And if you have any oh. information that you pass along, please feel free to uh, give all of your shout outs, your plugs, and all your love to all of the people who uh, inspired you to do what you're doing. Also, um, give us here your sales pitch for your book. So if you want to go ahead and do that, you can do that now. Okay, great. Yeah. Well, first I want to give a shout out to my best friend, which is Sage of Butters. She's my biggest critic and she has stuck by me through thick and thin. And our story is hilarious because she's actually my ex-husband's wife and she's my best friend. So, <laughs> um, and then I want to give a shout out to Jennifer. I can't pronounce her last name. I would murder it. I'm going to try to, I think it's Yetsi. Yet- 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 um, she's amazing. She's my beta reader. And my cover designer, which is author Navi Robbins, he had he did my cover. He did an amazing job. And then of course my publisher, Sharana, who is author she's author J. S. Mara and she is amazing. And to all my fans for everything they have done for me and my family, my fiance Michael and my three beautiful children, everybody has come together. This isn't just about me, it's about them also. They have backed me a hundred and ten percent and I'm grateful for them. And everybody, you can find me on Facebook and Twitter at Author Brianna Johnson. My email is Author Brianna2323 at Yahoo. I'm also on Instagram at Brianna Johnson4921. And you can get with me. I stay local, but I try to venture out. I will also mail you signed copies if you would like a copy of my book. Just get with me and send me a message. All right, and 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 like I said before, we want to thank you for taking out the time um, to be on the show. I hope you enjoyed yourself, and just to uh, plug in the book, um, what would be your sales pitch for somebody to purchase your book? Like, what would be the synopsis and and your sales pitch? Um, let's see. It would have to be to allow my book to take you somewhere, to allow it to give you a moment in time where you can escape your reality and enter into my reality. <laughs> All right. So, again, we want to thank um, Ms. Brianna Johnson for being our special guest for today. Um, and I hope you enjoyed yourself, and I look forward to seeing um, new things from you, and we'll keep in touch, okay? Yes, thank you so much for having me on today. I have enjoyed this more than you can imagine. All right. So we'll we'll like like I said, um get in touch with me after the show. I'll get you the links and everything and then you'll be able to um share that with your family and friends and I hope you have a great day, okay? Thank you so much, you too. All right. Take care. All right. All right, bye bye. You are live at the Literary Lounge with your host, Destiny D, bringing you the newest and the brightest of the literary world right to your ear hole. Every Saturday from 1 to 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Tune in. Listen up. And learn something. Next week, our special guest will be none other than Frank Ziegler. So tune in next week. This is the spot for new hot authors who are given the opportunity to shine each Saturday from 1 to 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We will showcase a new author here at the Literary Lounge. We are taking out the time to give all of our literary friends an opportunity to showcase their work. The new author spotlight is a platform that allows us to ask up to 10 questions or more 
to give you, the audience, the most in-depth current information about each writer in their literary piece. We will have a new guest every week. Stay tuned.